I'm Willem, and I want all of you to quickly think of a person in your life that you can say is a Jesus follower. Okay, could you think of someone? Now, still thinking of that person? What about that person tells you that they are a Jesus follower? Just shout it out. What do you see in their life that speaks to you? Kindness? Patience? Loving others? Encouraging others? There are many ways we can impact others' lives, and as Jesus followers, we hope that people will be encouraged to follow Jesus by the way that we live. In our God story today, we'll see that following God's path is the best way to impact others. Let's watch this. What's a snake's favorite subject? History. Hi everyone, it's Jen, and I'm so excited to be back with you today. I want to tell you a story about someone from my church when I was growing up who was a missionary over in Africa. And she was really inspiring to me because of how she gave to the church. Now, before I tell the rest of the story, I need to explain what a tithe is. A tithe is when people decide to give about 10% of what they have to the church. And my friend who was a missionary, she actually did the opposite of this. She lived on 10% and gave 90% to what God was doing in the church, which I thought was really incredible. And it really impacted me because it helped me think about what I could be doing to give more to God as well. And this leads me to today's big idea. Following God's path is the best way to impact others. So we're in the final week in our series on Hebrews. Now remember, Hebrews is a book in the New Testament that talks about the story of God's special family and how Jesus came and changed everything. So we're still in chapter 12. Now, if you remember the first week, we talked about how following Jesus is like running a long distance race. Then we talked about how God can use difficulties to make us stronger. And the last time we learned how spiritual mentors can help us to know God better. Today, we're going to look at verses 12 and 13. So put your hands to work, strengthen your legs for the journey, make level paths for your feet to walk on. Then those who have trouble walking won't be disabled. Instead, they will be healed. Okay, so the first verse talks about putting our hands to work. This is talking about the work that's needed to tell others about Jesus and to strengthen our legs for the journey. That journey is walking with Jesus. So that verse is actually a quote from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. So verse 12 would have sounded familiar to some readers. Let's read it now in Isaiah 35. Strengthen the hands of those who are weak. Help those whose knees give way. Say to those whose hearts are afraid, be strong and do not fear, your God will come. Then verse 13 begins by saying, make level paths for your feet to walk on. Now this would also sound familiar as it's from another Old Testament book, the book of Proverbs. So the writer of Hebrews was super familiar with the Old Testament, and he was reminding people of things they already knew to point them towards Jesus. Now this verse could be a call for us to personally do all that we can to make our path with Jesus as level as possible. So as we talked about other weeks, throwing off sin that entangles us, following spiritual mentors that help us along the way, doing all that we can so that our journey with Jesus can be the best that it can be. Or this verse could also be a call for us to encourage one another on this journey as well, because as we are walking with Jesus and making a straight path for ourselves, we are encouraging our friends to do so as well, and we can help one another and have fun doing it as we follow Jesus together. And when we help to make level paths, we are making a way for others to see and know God's way. And all of this is not through us, but through Jesus. So to wrap up, when we follow God's path, it really is the best way to impact others. How we live impacts others more than most of us even know. How are you following God's path? Are you following Jesus so that you know the way to go? As imperfect as I may be, that's the path I'm on. And when I'm unsure where to go, I look to Jesus. I do this because I know that God's way is the best way and following God's path is the best way to impact others. Well, friends, it's been so great to hang out with you again. I will see you next time. Hey friends, turn to the person next to you and answer the following questions before the time runs out. Question time! How are you following God's path? How can you encourage other people to follow God's path? Gain 
game time! Family photo. How many times can you say the key verse before the photo is taken? Say it with me. My child, think of the Lord's training as important. The Lord trains the one he loves. Hebrews 12, verses 5 and 6. Get ready! Three, two, one, go! The scripture we read showed that we should walk a straight path, and it once again reminded me how important our actions are. When people know that we're Jesus followers, our behavior can point them to Jesus. We recently checked in with Calder and his small group. You're going to love this. Hi, my name is Calder. I really enjoy dog sitting. The best part about dogs is how they're very entertaining, great listeners, and love belly rubs. I do lots of things. For example, on Wednesday nights, I get together with my church friends. We do lots of fun things, such as making food, playing board games, and playing capture the flag. Every other week we have a discussion week where we watch a video all together and then break up into our small groups and discuss what we learned, whether it's about how we can live our lives the way that Jesus would want us to or how we can impact others. Right now, I don't know of anybody in the group who's going through a hard time, but if somebody was going through a hard time, we are all really great listeners and are there for one another. Even James, our youth leader, he sets such a good example for us in the way that he loves and puts other people before himself. James says that at any time we can call on him if we need help or guidance. James and Ryan teach us that we can have a very Jesus-centered life and that we can teach other people how to be like Jesus. We see them as friends. Their life choices and actions directly impacts us because we want to be living more like Jesus. I love being a part of the small group because I'm surrounded by other people with the same faith and they encourage me to be a better Christian. And because of that, I feel like they're the closest thing to being a brother. There are many people who impact my life. For example, my science teacher. With some teachers, I just feel like they're there to do their job. Whereas with my science teacher, she really wants us to learn. The best part about science is doing labs with my friends and having a better understanding of what we're learning through that. Just like my science teacher and James, I want to impact other people's lives through my kindness and through my actions. I want them to know that I'm there for them and that I care about who they are. I think Jesus was liked by many people because of the decisions he made caring for those who didn't need to be cared for. Trying to be more like Jesus, we can accomplish so much. We can show peers and younger kids that you don't have to be mean to be cool. Jesus had a close group of friends, the disciples. They lived life with him, learned from him, and became more like him. I hope that with my small group, we can learn from one another and become more like Jesus and share that to other people. Wasn't that cool? The relationship between James as an adult and Calder and his friends seems so natural and effortless, and you can see that they really care for one another. And by following Jesus together, they impact each other's lives and the lives of people around them. Let's break into our small groups and see what this will look like in our stories. 